and we're live. Hello. Awesome. Uh, yeah, I think we are live. Hello, everybody. You're s pouring into the room, all these attendees pouring into the room, like water flowing into our meeting space for our chi practice today. And uh, go live. Bear with us just a couple seconds as you all filter in and we get Facebook up and running. And uh, we'll be getting started right away. In the meantime, please do follow some of these lovely people's leads and uh, jump in there in the chat room down in below. And when you do, uh, please do go ahead and uh, set the drop down to say all attendees and participants uh, as opposed to the default, which is just whatever it is, just uh, all part, all panelists. That's what it is. All panelists and attendees, because otherwise it'll just come to me and Zach and Lee and we're going to be busy talking. And, but we'd love to have you jump in and say who you are, where you're from, where you're joining us from. And uh, I'm seeing people already flowing in doing that. Hi from Philadelphia, hi from Minneapolis, hi from Morocco. And uh, I think we're live on Facebook, although when I hit go, it disappeared. <laughs> so. Yes, we are live on Facebook. Cool. Beautiful. All right. Hi from California, hi from Canada. Somebody all the way from Bonnie Dune. Oh no, really? Wow. Just in the mountains near us. He came a long way to be with us, whoever that is. Owner, owner 12. It's pretty close. <laughs> Bonnie Dune and Ottawa, I think, are really close. Yeah, yeah, they're, they're right next to each other. Yeah. Ottawa, California, you mean. Right, yeah. <laughs> it's the capital of, uh, never mind. <laughs> it's the capital of Qigong. That's right. That's what trying to say. Okay, great. Well, as people continue to uh, filter in, we're going to go ahead and get started here. I uh, appreciate everybody joining us. Appreciate everybody jumping into the chat. Uh, just to reiterate, if you're on Zoom, uh, then please do, when you go down to the chat, change the little drop down that says all panelists to say all panelists and attendees. That way everybody can see you and where you're from. Those of you who are on Facebook, if you'd like to join us over in Zoom, uh, the link should be posted by one of my team members over in Facebook as a comment on the live stream that you're watching. Um, and whether you're watching it on the group or on the page, that should be a thing that's happening. So hopefully uh, that is easy for you to find. And then you're certainly welcome to just watch us live on Facebook if you don't necessarily want to jump on Zoom. That's totally OK, too. And uh, all is well. So we're going to get started here. So Lee. Um, since this is Tea with Lee, and we have a tradition of starting out with a little bit of tea uh, experience and letting people know what we're drinking and also uh, give, them a little bit, give them a little more education on the tea, what do you got? Cool pot. Isn't that a cool pot? This, yeah. was, this was given to me by um, a, a Qigong center on the East Coast in the Berkshires in Massachusetts. Uh, called Eastover. And the owner there, she is a, a, a tea connoisseur. She had about a, I want to say a thousand pots in her wow. collection. So at the end of the week when I was teaching, she um, gifted me this one. It's a very ornate teapot. So I love it. It's like a little, uh, it's like a little gourd with a stem, huh? Yeah. And what, what I like about it is if you, if you can just leave it in your, uh, mm. this and it hooks in there. So you could just tip it. And then if you're need another pair of hands, you can just leave it like this. I love it. Yeah. Fancy. Um, so the tea I'm drinking is mystery tea. Mm. I uh, was digging through my tea collection and uh, found a bag of tea and I don't know exactly what it is at all. So uh, it's, uh, huh. I'm demystifying it right now. That's exciting. It's very earthy. Uh -huh. um, what what form might be it? old? Was it a, uh, a big cake or was it a brick or? It's just a little chunk. Okay. Little chunk in a bag. Yeah, I got some of those. Yeah. <laughs> I, got a lot of those. 
I don't know if it was a gift, uh, if I stashed it there somehow, but I thought it would be fun to drink and try to figure out what it is. It's, it's tasting quite old, and um, I don't know if people know this, but the older your tea, your puer tea, often the higher the quality. So they talk about puer tea taking about 20 to 30 years to arrive into its fullest potential, kind of mm -hmm. like human beings. Um, and it is the older teas can be quite expensive and really delicious and somewhat psychoactive. So if, if the tea with Lee starts to get a little uh, funky and <laughs> fun and fresh, it's, it's definitely the tea talking. Blame the mystery tea. Mm -hmm. Well, I love that. And I, yeah, everything you said is uh, certainly the case. The, the trick of course is to find old tea that's been carefully tended for 20, 30, 40 years, which is why it's so very expensive. There's a lot of, uh, you could find tea that's like, Pu'er from the 60s, but it probably isn't. And even if it is, it's probably just sort of gradually turned into garbage. <laughs> yeah. Um, and you can one really of the most challenging things it. also. Yeah. Yeah, you can really feel the difference. That's, you know, this, the old teas really deliver a lot of chi. And um, it is uh, a real difference when you find a, a well tended to tea, as you were saying. It's kind of like raising children. You have to raise your tea brick for about 20 years and putting in put it in different locations so that it's just right because puer is uh has a lot of microbial activity in that over time then creates you know this wonderful alchemy in within the tea you know they think of tea bricks as living beings because they really are so if you drink it one year and five years from now you drink it it's a totally different brick of tea mm -hmm. there's nothing really like it don't you think yeah, I certainly haven't encountered anything like it. I guess some people uh, age balsamic vinegar for a long time. Oh, they do, but you don't yeah. drink it, right? Yeah, you'd, you'd use it sparingly okay. if you have a 100, 120 year old balsamic. But and the thing about the tea, the another interesting thing about it is that uh, it's very, very, very difficult to tell at the beginning based on the raw materials that you have whether and what kind of quality it's going to become. So just kind of like people, right? Like you raise your kid and that doesn't mean they're not going to be a criminal <laughs> because they had a lot of potential when they were a little baby. <laughs> so when you get out there in the world and the 30 years go by and it changes and the polyphenol, you know, the chemical constituency as well as the, the particular microbes and so forth uh, can really impact it dramatically. So it's kind of a crapshoot if you're in the tea business, starting these teas that you think have a lot of potential, but 30 years later, you know, 80% of them might just be kind of worthless. And then that, that one batch that just came out amazing that everybody wants, like that, those 70s iron cakes we had. Uh, or yeah. The brick or the earth brick. I mean, those are examples of just star teas in somebody's uh, repertoire. Yeah. That, that, that survived and be, it's kind of like music, right? So the music from the 70s, there was a lot of horrible, horrible music in the 70s. But the stuff that people still listen to today, like the Beatles and all these other things, was the best of it then. It was the peak of that pyramid back then. So it stuck around and all the garbage just kind of fell away. And we don't, we don't even know it existed. We, or we, you know, pretend it never existed, as the case may be. <laughs> kind of like uh, fashion trends. So yeah, it's fascinating. I'm drinking. I believe I drank this on an earlier call, but it, it's just such a good tea for this time of day. It's uh, Heaven's Nest, this little mini tocha or not mini tocha but small tocha which is like it's like a little it's like a it's like a, it was like a half a baseball now it's turning into like a half a mushroom <laughs> yeah as i've been flaking away at it and i have a little blue pot with some nice markings on it i don't know how well you could see that yeah that's a nice pot i love this pot it's a sweet little thing it's got a great shape it's got a, a really nice ball strainer uh, probably not gonna be able to get light on that but Nope, guess not. But a ball strainer, if you find a clay teapot with a, a ball inside with a bunch of holes in it right around the spout area, it really helps the tea pour beautifully. So this is one of my better pouring pots. And here we go. So Lee, you've got a, a couple of things you wanted to do with us, but do you want to kick things off with yeah. a, little, a, a tea? Let's, tar let's do a little, little tea meditation present. as we've been doing. Great. Um, it's always great to take a little time and just start with some gratitude practice. 
I had a beautiful day this morning with my kids. I took them out into the Redwoods with the dog, Charlie, and they just had a ball in the Redwoods in the, at the river. Uh, the four of us were, were out there. My girlfriend, Hetty, joined us, and we just had a great time crossing a, uh, what looked like a ferry bridge, but it was a bridge through, of rocks right over the stream. And we just played and ate snacks and had a great time in the river. So uh, I'm grateful for that. So let's, let's stir in whatever you're grateful for about your day. Just bring it to your heart center and do a little stirring in. You can think about your morning, anything that stands out in your mind as something that you appreciate, that you're grateful for. And take a big deep breath and just bring a, a little smile between your eyes. This is a Taoist technique called the inner smile. And you just try to feel an elevation in your face as you tune into your heart center and think about the things that you're grateful for. Now, gratitude takes training. It takes practice. It's like, uh, it's like cultivating a garden. It's easy for the weeds to grow. Nobody has to train you how to worry, be mentally stressed, but it does take some practice and some tending to, to cultivate joy, gratitude, or happiness. And so that's what we do. We put our attention and where your attention goes, energy follows. And what kind of attention? We're, we're having a positive inner state, positive attention, tuning into those things in our lives that we're grateful for, that we appreciate the people in our lives, the experiences that we get to have. Even in challenging times, and especially in challenging times, you can do this training to fortify and strengthen your ability to tune into gratitude. So we stir that in and then we're gonna sip our tea and just mindfully witness the tea moving through your body. And it's like your mental, emotional energy of gratitude and the tea together mix to create that alchemy of form and formless. The formless being your intention and your emotion and the form being the tea in your body. And we stir those together so that our feelings and our mental states create an effortless flow towards gratitude into our physical reality. Cheers, everybody. Grateful for our tea sessions. Me too. These are great. Mm. Wow. We were also going to talk, Ben and I were talking before uh before we got started about um chinese medicine view on the immune system mm -hmm. and just continuing to talk about immunity a chinese medicine perspective of health and healing um how we can stay empowered because in these kinds of times we often feel very powerless there's this invisible virus that seems to be all around us is it around us is it not around us um, everybody's in face masks and staying fairly sheltered. So how do we maintain a strong sense of empowerment within ourselves? How do we let go where we don't have power and how do we take a hold where we actually do have power? And so where we can really cultivate our power is with working with our internal energy, our internal state of mind and body and to strengthen your, what is called Wei Qi in Chinese medicine, spelled W-E-I. Wei means uh, protective, your protective Qi. And on the yang side of protective Qi is about your physical body. So in the same way, when we were thinking about uh, a form and formless, we have protection for your physical body, which we call the immune system. Now, the immune system is a very complex system that makes up you know, part of it comes from your white blood cells, some of it's your skin, some of it's your mucous membranes. You know, it's everything from white blood cells to earwax as your immune system. So it's a, it's a complex system of physiology. And when we look at it in terms of energy, your chi is what powers up your physical body's uh, systems. So when your chi is strong, your systems work better, and especially your immune system. So we want strong, healthy energy, that creates strong, uh, a strong physiology or physiological function of your immunity. The other part of the immune system that um, is interesting that we wouldn't think of in Western terms, but we talk about the emotional immune system. 
and we get bombarded with negative emotions, both from external sources and from within our own thinking process. So we might be thinking about the future and starting to worry. And it's similar to somebody being really stressed out around us or stressed out towards us because we have this internal dialogue going on that can create stress and stress will then um, create a, a negative effect in our physiology and our immune system. So emotional immunity is is another kind of way chi protective energy. Now we can protect ourselves from negative emotions from other people. We can also do it from within our own minds, becoming skillful at transforming mental stress back into vitality or healthy energy within ourselves. So those two things create our, what is compromised, uh, comprise the uh, way chi or the immunity, both mentally, emotionally, and physiologically. So when we see negative things happening in the world or there's negativity around us, we're in a conversation with somebody that's very stressed out or worried, do we take that energy on and it does it shift our internal state or can we stay strong? And sometimes we can and sometimes we don't. So how do we stay protected in the face of negative emotional energy, worries and anxieties that are happening all around us and stay strong within ourselves? And uh, that's kind of a, a Qigong puzzle or mystery that we work with and simply question. by doing qigong we can do it yeah that is a great question and that and kind of the key to life really in some ways <laughs> you just get better and better at it as, as you practice and then when you're not so good at it you just have a good laugh at yourself because we uh you know sometimes we do well and sometimes we don't and uh the key to that is then letting it go and trying again it is practice mm -hmm. Well, I love it. And, and certainly I've found that in my own case, the, uh, you know, the, the power of Qigong practice over time to make it so quick and so barely existent, you know, just kind of a blip on the radar if I get sick or if I catch a bug or something and just go, oh, and I notice a lot quicker. And then it's like, I was going to lay down for a minute and it's gone. <laughs> you know, like I don't lay down, do some breathing practices and often, um, you know, you have enough uh, resources within yourself to create that transformation. And, you yeah. know, the goal is, it's not perfection. It's just the goal is often excellence, but you don't have to, you're never going to be perfect at doing the practice. It's about developing a skill set. That's why qi gong, gong means skill. Mm -hmm. You develop the skill at working with different energies. And so sometimes we're really skillful working with our physical body's energy. Sometimes we're skillful working with emotional energy. Sometimes we're skillful in this relationship, but not so skillful in that relationship. So we always are discovering who we are in the face of adversity as life unfolds and where we need to develop more skill at working with chi, life's, life's energy. Mm -hmm. and, um, and this is sure a different kind of energy that's thrown at us right now than most of us has ever, ever experienced. So I guess the question you know, that we can ask ourselves is how do we thrive in the face of adversity and this particular adversity? How can we thrive um, and work with this energy? And when it's challenging, how does it, how do, can we use it to help us to become stronger? Uh, what are the lessons that we can, um, that we can pull out from it and distill from this? And where can we develop more skill sets? Uh, what's the opportunity here? Can we take time to be with ourselves, to really deepen our own personal practice, to get to know our own consciousness? Because let's face it, we often spend more time thinking about money and our financial health and our energetic health and our chi. We spend a lot more time on our devices than we do witnessing and mirroring our own consciousness. And so this might be a time where we can start to reflect and meditate and do more energetic practice so we come out of this um, even stronger. So I think those are the inquiries that, that we can have for ourselves that will lead us to a more empowered place. Because if we ask ourselves the right questions, the right answers start to find th their way to the surface. So start asking yourself questions that lead you to, towards positive outcomes. I love the way you put that. 
it's so funny how often, I mean, part of it's the dialogue too, right? In your head and understanding and, and cultivation of these practices and cultivation of, uh, especially I think the Shen layer, you know, that sort of observer layer allows you to notice when your inner dialogue is not favorable. And it allows mm -hmm. you to notice and, and be present to it and realize that, okay, yeah, sure. I, you know, my mind's going off on a thing, but you notice a lot sooner and go, wait a sec, you know, I can have that next level of awareness of like, maybe, is that really true? Does it really make sense? Like, what, what am I just tripping out? <laughs> What's really going on here? And is it, do I have to have this level of rumination about this thing? And then often replace it with those questions. I think sometimes those are the questions, you know, it, the dialogue out there right now in the world is so um, it's, it's become extremely divisive and it's become extremely difficult to know on some sort of intellectual level by processing all this information, where this is going to go or where it should go or whether it should be the way it is or, you know, whether there's uh, problems. And so I think people are um, putting a lot of energy and a lot of time into a lot of a reactivity based on all the information that's coming in. Mm -hmm. So how would you suggest that people what's right or determine, you know, in the face of all this sort of continuous and increasing, I would say now, polarity in the different uh, ways that people message things and the different ways that people are, all the different information people are getting out there in the world right now. Yeah, it's true. I mean, and a lot of it is sometimes is there's just no way to tell. So I always, recommend coming back to the moment come back to the present moment as a neutralizing of negativity because sometimes negativity and our feelings and our internal dialogue it's hard to go from being in a negative space or a space of worry to go into a positive space but going to a neutral space can can help to clear and cleanse so you can always come back to the moment mm -hmm. and then come back to the observer so you were you mentioned the observing mind which our consciousness is so amazing that we could be observing our own thoughts, you know? So there's you observing and then there's the thoughts. So it's an incredible process where you can, this is called, Ben mentioned a term, Shen means consciousness or spirit. It also can refer to the observer. So you can say, huh, look at those thoughts going through my mind and be witness to the thoughts. And then you can, again, distill the thoughts that you like or that are life supportive and then let go of the thoughts that you don't like. I mean, you really can just laugh at the thoughts in your head because who is even thinking those thoughts? You didn't even choose those thoughts. It's like you're on a radio station that's just playing. Your, mo your thoughts are like programs that are just playing on a loop. And the scary thing is that most thoughts that you're having today are, this, are the same ones or similar ones that you had yesterday. Oh, yeah. And so we want to we want to be observant so that we can say, oh, those are thoughts that are really helping to support my life. Oh, those are the thoughts that I want to get rid of and cleanse. And uh, then I can say, like we did with our tea practice, we become the choice maker of our programming. So we say, I'm going to choose to think positive thoughts and thoughts of gratitude. Mm -hmm. And we start to reprogram the, the programming that's going on when we're not choosing our thoughts. And so often we're in daydream states where, you know, we pick up energy and we just start, it just starts looping in our heads and then it creates an emotion. That emotion creates physiology. And pretty soon we're in a depressed state because we've heard stuff. So we come back to the present moment. How do you come back to the present moment? This is a great question. Speaking of inquiry, you yeah. simply ask a question to yourself. Where am I right now? then you observe with your observing mind, with your Shen, you just put attention on anything that's happening in the moment. And most of the things that are happening right here, right now are not life-threatening. So stress isn't, a res isn't something that's um, helpful. So we can just say, okay, I feel, I feel my back on the chair. I hear in the background my bulldog snoring. Maybe you guys can hear that too. I can see the ocean out in front of me here. I can, you know, I just tune in without judging. So that's the key is to get out of judging thoughts that create, that are polarizing. This is good. This is bad. Mm -hmm. So we start to just be present and then you have space to hold both polarities 
And this is what's called compassion. If you have space to hold both polarities, the positive and the negative, you are not attached to either one. And it's what happens from present moment awareness when you stabilize that, it, you fall into a state, a natural state of inner peace. Hmm. Because in this moment, I feel safe, I feel content, I feel calm, I'm breathing deep, where am I? I'm here. You just, as your mind starts to think and go into judgment or stress or worry or what ifs, come back to the moment with the question. The key is to answer your own question. Where am I? I'm here. How do I know I'm here? Observe. So now your Shen is turned on. It's online. I'm observing. I see, I feel, I hear, I taste, and I don't do any of those things with, with thinking or judgment. And you try to maintain that. So this is a mindfulness and action. You can do it with your Qigong practice. So as you're doing your Qigong practice, where am I? I'm here. How do I know I'm here? I feel my chi circulating. I feel my breath coming in and out through the nose. And this is the gong, the skill set of working with your mind. Mm -hmm. To be able to craft and create some moments during your day. Moments of elevated energy, of inner peace, you know, not all moments are going to be that way, but you want to take a vacation from mental stress of emotional anxiety. Take a, take a good vacation each and every day by dropping into the moment, breathing deep and elevating your energy. And even 10 to 20 minutes of that will shift your uh, nervous system out of stress mode and, and boost your immune system. Fantastic. And, and spot on, you know, I, I love how uh, one of the things that I've heard said is that of the three treasures, and we talk about those as the three energies, the body and the energy of your emotions, the energy of the mind and, and spirit, the Jing, the Qi, and the Shen, that the Shen is the most important because it's what makes us human. And it's what distinguishes us. It's, and as you say, as humans, we have this remarkable ability to observe our own thoughts and go, well, who's the thinker and who's the observer? You know, it's a whole question you could, uh, it's probably a good question for everybody to chew on if they're on a spiritual path. Yep. But, uh, you know, the answer is experiential and not something we can ever say. The, um, and the, the practice of, in the moment, the practice of Qi Gong to me has been the most uh, effective precedent for meditation. It just sort of, puts you into that space very quickly because of what you said. Where am I? I'm, I'm here with the chi flowing in my body, the breath in my nostrils, the body reacting in and of itself. And, I, and it gives you the opportunity to stop really thinking and be present. And then if you sit down and do, you know, a, a deep silent meditation, it's very easy to kind of be in that mindful place very quickly, at least for me. Yeah. Compared to starting with just sitting down and trying to quiet my thoughts and still my mind without the physical activity first. And, the, and especially the consciousness of the internal flow and the, and the sensations of the inside of the body that are so powerful in Qigong. Uh, and in particular, the breathing. And so I love what you said about the breathing breaks. Do you feel like taking us on a little breathing practice mini tour before we get into Q&A right okay, now? Okay, let's do, uh, people in the chat room are saying breathe. Yes, breathe. Yes, breathe. Yes, breathe. Yes. Let's do that. Uh, no, let's just make sure that all the people listening have been breathing today. Yeah. Have you? Have you been breathing? Yeah. Anybody, anybody here who hasn't breathed at all today? Raise yeah, your hand. Raise your hand. Yeah. No. And we breathe about, uh, you know, 20,000 times a day. So that's a lot of, that's a lot of energy. 20,000 breaths a day. So you're doing it when you're not thinking about it and you're doing it when you're thinking about it. It's one of those things that is a bridge between our subconscious body functions. So heartbeats, uh, even thoughts, you know, a lot of the cellular activities we can't change simply with our consciousness, but breath is. So when you change breath, you're really working into the, into the programming of your subconscious mind and all your physiological functions. And it's especially good for the respiratory system to breathe slower and deeper. So let's get to slow breathing. And this one, first, we're gonna start off with a little bit of a clearing. We're gonna add a, a micro adversity to our breath practice. So it's like weight training for your respiratory system. Oh, cool. So we'll do a little strengthening. 
Uh, and then we'll do, we're going to, what we're attempting to do is to get to slow breathing. Mm -hmm. Slow breathing in and out through the nose is how you should be breathing most of the time. But if we want to add a little strength training, we do something a little different. So let's do um, a fanning the fire breathing. So you're going to put your hands just on your belly and we're going to inhale through the nose with a, and then a strong exhale. Good, let me explain it. So we're gonna do that for a minute. Then you're gonna exhale and I'm gonna have you hold your breath for about 10 or 15 seconds. And that's kind of the strength training. I mean after hold you breath. exhale? What's that? Oh, you're gonna exhale and hold your breath. Hold it out, not in. Correct. Oh, okay. Hold it out and makes it, makes it harder. So that when you inhale, your body's gonna say, on my next breath, I'm gonna convert that breath to chi. Uh. Right? So uh, with practice, you can hold your breath a little bit longer and longer and longer. So you're going to do that breathing and then you're going to exhale, hold the breath 10 or 15 seconds and you're going to come back to slow breathing through your nose. Hmm. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Okay, let's try it. So we're going to hands on the belly and we're going to... And it's a strong exhale through pursed lips, like through a straw. Do five more. Now exhale and hold 10 or 15 seconds. Quiet your mind as you go into quietness within yourself. Now come back to slow breathing through your nose. In through the nose, out through the nose, very slowly. And that's a very good technique to calm and clear your mind. If, if you have a lot of thoughts in your head, if you have a lot of worries going on, you do that, you know, a minute or two, you're going to want to do oh, two to four rounds of that. And in the last round, you can, you can do this slow breathing in and out through your nose much longer and just go right into meditation from there. I love it. It's fun, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, definitely uh, shifts the energy very quickly, almost immediately, and uh, feels great. Mindy's asking, is that hyperventilating? Is it bad? <laughs> it's, um, it's not. It's kind of like weightlifting. So is, is weightlifting bad? It can be if you do it too heavy <laughs> and you're not in shape. So that's why we just did it for, you know, 30 seconds and a 15-second breath hold. You know, you could do it longer and lo do longer breath holds. With practice, that exhale and hold, you can get up to a minute, two minutes, three minutes without, without problems. Uh, mm -hmm. And it, what it does is it makes you a very efficient breather. Uh, apparently, what it does is it starts to simulate high altitude. And um, in high altitude, people tend to live longer because their bodies become more oxygen efficient. Mm -hmm. and so what we want to do is to create your body as an oxygen efficient machine metabolically and to be able to convert the oxygen or the breath into chi. And that's kind of what we're doing. Great. Yeah. That makes, that makes great sense. A um, couple of questions coming up. Uh, yeah. Is it normal to feel a little dizzy with that? Is it normal to feel a little dizzy with that? Yeah. You might not be used to that much uh, oxygen circulating or that much way in which you're releasing carbon dioxide from your system. So that's yeah. fine. Yep, I find that that does get less pronounced, although the sensation of chi is pronounced and sometimes can be up in the head after that. 
Yeah. So sometimes it is nice to kind of bring it down and, yeah, you know, if that's what's happening. It's, uh, you know, it's nice to be lighter in our heads and sometimes we're not used to it. <laughs> well said. Uh, what was the name of the breath again? Oh, yeah, ahead, sorry. Oh, yeah, your brain, despite being only 3% of your body's total weight, uses 25 to 30% of your body's oxygen. Mm. So when you get that, that oxygen flush to the head, it's actually really, really good. Another question was just the name of the breath. And you call that fire breathing. Yeah, fanning the fire. It's also called bellows breathing. Bellows breathing, right. Yeah. Um, and Emmanuel, I guess Emmanuel showed up a little late. She, he's asking what tea we're drinking. And I know he's been here uh, drinking tea with us in the past. Uh, I'm just going to take a brief moment before we go into Q&A and uh, show you guys what I'm drinking. This is my little set up here. And this is my pot, which is ready to pour off. And it's a very dark pu'er because there's such tiny, tiny little leaves on this amazing tea called Heaven's Nest. I'll give my friends a little love here. And uh, yeah, so this is a dark pu'er called Heaven's Nest. And uh, as you can see, it comes out almost looking like coffee. Um, often that's how I like my pu'er. And not everybody likes that, but I do. Lee said he was drinking a mystery tea. Um, which is exciting that he found in his collection and a, a little chunk of it. So there you go. Uh, so since we've kind of rolled into Q&A, and I appreciate the, the, the lesson, Lee, and I think our, um, it's such a straightforward and simple practice like most breathing exercises are, but they're really profound and they really have a profound impact on your energy system, on your nervous system, on the oxygenation, all these things that you describe, you know, not just on how you feel, but how your body functions and performs. And so I think they're, uh, it's important. And this is also why you often do energy and breathing practices in our Qigong that you train us on. But I think it's important to know that you can just do a breathing practice for two minutes anytime. It doesn't mm -hmm. have to be getting up and doing something physical and active necessarily to shift your nervous system it can help just to do breathing practice yeah excellent cool uh, i'm seeing some questions in the q a yeah why don't you drop about breathing, so maybe we'll and uh, let me let people topic. yeah let me let people know uh we are going to do some uh live q a for those who want to i see a few hands are raised so that's great one of which uh is our uh, imposter zach <laughs> and um hope oh, we have one last hand raised those of you who want to, we're not going to get to everybody probably uh, once we do the, uh, the Q&A participants with the hand raised. And so what I'm going to do is actually when the time comes and just to be sure everybody's still present, I'm actually going to lower everybody's hand and then have you raise your hands again. So I'm taking note of the names of the people who are currently raised so I can kind of pick them out of the crowd later if they're still around and they still want to uh, come on and ask a question. Sometimes also Lee will answer the question you had during Q&A uh, and sometimes People, if you post it in Q&A and then, you know, maybe you want your hand raised or not. So that's why when the time comes, I'm going to lower all the hands and then have you guys raise them again uh, when we decide to shift into live mode. And in the meantime, there's a Q&A button uh, or box and button <laughs> that you can jump into if you want to uh, type out your question and that's totally fine too. So um, that's down at the bottom as well. So those of you who want to, feel free to throw uh, questions in the Q&A, and then Zach will be gathering them up on Facebook. Those of you as well who want to add some questions to the comments, and we'll get through as many of both of those as we can. Great. Rock and roll, Lee. Great. Excellent. Yeah. Um, so, so somebody's asking about um, when to breathe in, out through the mouth or the nose. And this is a very common question. So in breathing is always going to shift energy. So when you like this, like we were doing, when you exhale out through the mouth, it's a sign for your energy and your intention to be clearing. You're gonna clear whatever needs to be let go of. So that might be neck and shoulder tension, it might be stress, it might be a worry, it might be something you picked up from your environment, another person that was irritating, a circumstance that was challenging. You, I'm gonna let that go. So you exhale through the mouth. And when you inhale, exhale through the nose, it's a more refined breathing. I'm going to keep in. So once you're in a state where you've cleansed and cleared and you want to now cultivate energy, uh, positive energy, energy of peace, 
and presence and joy and happiness, you inhale, exhale through the nose. So often in our Qigong practice, in the beginning of class, there'll be a lot of exhaling through the mouth, where it, whether it's a, a clearing exercise, like a clearing with the arms as you're doing this, or shaking, <sighs> exhaling through the mouth, clearing. Now your body's clear. We go into our flowing movements. Inhale, exhale through the nose. Meditation, you can often inhale, exhale and through the nose as a way to just hold that state of inner peace. If something agitating comes up or there's a lot of thoughts, you can exhale through the mouth. Good. Um, somebody's asking, what is a qi good Qigong breakfast? What's a good <laughs> Qi breakfast? Well, pu'er tea is very good. Um, uh, this morning, what I drank, and uh, um, it wasn't delicious, but it is healthy for you. I did a smoothie with beets, turmeric, ginger, lemon, and kale with some frozen berries. Mm. So that, I often do um, like a scramble with, uh, you know, broccoli and pesto or something like that. Um, I make my kids uh, almond flour pancakes. So mm. some people like to, you know, skip breakfast. Um, it's, sometimes it's nice to have your eating window in a shorter amount of time, like, um, you know, eat from 11 to 7 p.m. And, and condense food times to a shorter window so your body has a lot of digestive rest. There's so many things to do. Um, listen to your body. Some people need a real warming body. So if you're doing a smoothie, that's why I put some ginger in it because it's an herb that's warm. Um, mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, some people do really well with high protein and other people do well with something more simple like oatmeal. And they can both be good. Everybody's body is different. And so when we look at diet in terms of Chinese medicine, we're, we're kind of asking the question, what does your body need? Where are you? What's your energy like? Are you running cold? Is your chi deficient? Are you running hot and excess? So those might be two different meals. So if you're excess, you've got a lot of stress and frustration and anger, you might want some foods that are more cooling and calming. Uh, if you have a really strong digestive system, you, a smoothie might be fine. If you have a compromised digestive system, they would recommend more warm breakfast that, uh, you know, like the oatmeals or congee, often the, the cooked rice with some herbs to warm up your digestive fire before going into the day. So it's a complex question. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, let's see. Which there's a number of, uh, of sleep-related topics today. Oh, yeah, is there? Yeah, which I find interesting. Um, there's somebody asking about breathing practices for sleep, and then um, we have a couple down towards the bottom, uh, Regina and Irina, both asking about sleep. And trying to do Qigong around sleep time seems like yeah. it's very activating for them, so you might uh, okay. kind of follow up a couple answers there. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. I think there's a lot of people having a hard time sleeping during this coronavirus time. Yeah. Yeah. So you can get up and do a little Qigong practice. The classic Qigong practice for sleep is the healing sounds. Most specifically is the triple warmer sound. So if you wake up or right before going to bed, pre preventatively do, you just do your arms, sit at the edge of your bed, arms come up and then you, H-E-E-E, -E -E, H E E E. Yeah. And you exhale all the way out. And the sign that the triple warmer is active is that your feet start to feel warm or you mm -hmm. feel buzzing and tingling on the soles of your feet. And it actually happens. So it takes three to nine times, maybe longer. Big deep breath up to your chest and then you can get that energy to go down to your feet. Mm -hmm. And your head's calm and you sleep and you rest well. Yeah, I find that's very helpful also. Um, and some of the Qigong practices really are somewhat energizing, so they're not necessarily great to do right before bed. Yeah. I'll, I'll recommend that uh, Lee went over a number of practices in the Qigong for Better Sleep workshop, which is kind of one of those deep dive workshops where he goes into the theory and the practice number of uh, acupressure points and then a number of practices that are calming and relaxing you could do within an hour before bed kind of thing mm -hmm. or in the evening to make sure your sleep is is good um so that i'll definitely recommend that which is available 
in the previous workshop section of our website. Oh, Meg yeah. says her feet are tingling just from a few times. It yeah. works, doesn't it? It does. <laughs> it really works. Yeah. It feels good. Okay. Um, you have another question, T. Ben? Uh, yeah, there are a couple of different ones. The one that I think is jumping out at me right now is the um, question about Brenda's asking about the turtle and the water buffalo in your recent subscription class. Yeah. Really enjoying those and asking if they're from a certain Qigong style. Yeah, they're from Iron Shirt Qigong. Yeah. So you can, um, Iron, Iron Shirt is postural training. Uh, sometimes I call it postures of power. And the turtle and the water buffalo are two of those postures. You hold the posture for two or three minutes while you're doing some breathing practice and you get a real shift in your energy. So that's a great, a great practice. Uh, we did just do an iron shirt training practice and program that's online. So that do you like those practices, you might want to work with that uh, workshop series. And I did a bonus um, routine specifically on the turtle and how that works and breaking it down and, and, and really deconstructing it so that you have a full turtle practice. Yeah, the turtle is such a power builder and it really you know, builds a lot of power um, and a lot of potency to the energy. You know, the energy becomes very strong uh, when you do that practice regularly. So um, it's one of my favorites. Mira Pfeffer is also giving us a, a thank you. She, she, she didn't have a question, but she just wanted to say um, she, she's really stoked about the iron shirt itself. So I figured I'd throw that in while we're here. Yeah, while we're and, talking about uh, it. Yeah. Another one that is teed up is actually, I've been curious about this myself, is William Bishop's asking, can you give a clear Qigong style face mask breathing? Any mm -hmm. ideas how we can maintain as much vitality as possible during our time wearing the face masks? Yeah, that's good. I think, I think we did that. I think that exercise we did, push away. It's like, a, it's gonna you strengthen your, your Wei Qi. It's gonna knock your face mask off, so it's gonna do. Yeah, I, I wanna, so when you're doing this with the face mask on, your face, Smash should go out and then snap back. And <laughs> back. So that should Woody be cool. <laughs> we, on the, we should have some face masks that say like, you know, powered by chi. So let's, let's put that in our uh, repertoire of things to release, Ben. Sounds good to me. The face mask chi. I love that idea. Powered by chi face mask. I, yeah. I think that would be good. With a big Q on it. Yeah, I like it. <laughs> okay, okay. Here's where uh, our, our great ideas come from. It is, exactly. Um, there are quite a few more, so I don't know if you want to pick a few out and just kind of rapid fire. Hey, yeah, sure. Um, Aliyah is asking, will the session be available to view in the future? And it will be. We, we sent it out in our emails. So yeah, this is a replay. Yeah, this particular, these tea sessions will be on um, uh, YouTube. We'll be posting them on our YouTube channel and sending an email about it with a link to that. So please do feel free to, uh, to watch those forever. <laughs> yeah. Someone asking about the healing sounds. Uh, they, they had a prescription for asthma and they're supposed to do the lung sounds 30 times. And they're asking, uh, can I first, uh, can I first, uh, can I do the sounds first, like all six sounds and then do the white lights? Oh, I see. Can they do the sounds and then do the white light and the meditation afterwards? And absolutely you can. You can either do all the sounds and then do the meditation, or you can do a sound and then a little meditation and the sound and a little meditation in between. Um, so whatever works best for you is good. Yeah, usually if I'm doing a number of them, uh, which often I'll do before bed or whatever, that I usually don't do sound and then light sound and then light personally um but now that i know that's an option i think i'll try that and normally what i do is i'll do nine of them or whatever and then sit there and hang out with the, the white light in my hands for a little while afterward yeah yeah that's that's good and, and sometimes it's it, you can make it a full like a sound meditation and then the color meditation and the mm -hmm. sound is cleansing and clearing and colors are tonifying and strengthening beautiful so uh, somebody's saying that they, they're still practicing from my, my modern Qigong with Mind Valley, and they do the morning and evening routines. Is it, is it better to do something and add something new? And it always is. It's always good to cross train and do different yeah. routines. It's nice to have your favorites or ones that work really well for you. 
but try to cross train your routines for, for optimization. And so I might suggest getting on the subscription, doing subscription classes because they're always so different and will train different parts of your body, different parts of your energy system. We'll talk about current events or seasons and work with what's going on. And you can always do your morning and evening practice, you know, a couple times a week and do some subscription a couple times a week or find another program that you like, do a workshop. It's nice to just mix it up. And that's what we try to keep through our you know, website and, and the things that we offer, keep it really fresh and fun and connected with the community. And I, I like that as, a, as an optimal way to practice our Qigong. Especially now that we're doing them live. Um, yeah. The connection yeah. with the community is really quite palpable. And the other thing I'll ask is those Mind Valley, or the modern Qigong rather, um, were 10 minutes each, I think? The morning and evening routine? Yeah, I think there was 10 or 20 minute options. Oh, okay, great, yeah. What I was gonna say is, I mean, getting up into a little bit longer of routines, the 20 minute stuff, or uh, like the 20 minutes is our short routine from the subscription class and the full class is usually 45 to an hour plus a meditation. Um, so getting up at least a, a couple of days a week to a longer practice will really change the way that this impacts you and your ability to feel and sense the energy you're, you're experiencing, which is great. Yeah, somebody just asked if they could do the anxiety routine that we did in the immunity kit mm. before bed, and that's a good one to do. In Chinese medicine, they say the heart is the ruler of sleep. So when your heart is in a calm, relaxed space and we sleep really well. Great. Okay. Um, I think uh, here's one from Pavel from Poland that I'd love to, to have you go over. Do you think that when exercising with uh, you, I should learn subsequent routines by heart? He's one of our teacher trainers also. Um, or is it enough to practice watching you and listening to your instructions? And certainly for me, uh, also, he's giving a lot of gratitude for the instruction explanations and uh, inspires him to continue working despite being over 70 years of age. Mm. So he's continuing to uh, deepen his practice. And I'll just say that, that for my part, um, I find both to be enormously helpful. When I'm working with a video, with one of our video classes or one of our videos of the outdoor work or whatever, Lee's cues to go inside and the reminder to reconnect with the breath, the, those cues can be helpful to keep your mind from wandering and to kind of like bring you back into and sometimes deepen the experience and the practice. And yet being able to just go outside in my backyard and just do a practice on my own also feels really good and feels, mm -hmm. uh, and, and it's a different experience that in some ways can be deeper, but in other ways, if I'm busy in the mind and not necessarily uh, able to be as present, having Lee and the voice guiding me back into that presence can be very helpful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Both are good. Um, I would say, you know, Definitely practice, uh, try doing some practice on your own. It's good to just start to say, huh, I wonder what I remember. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, go outside in the woods, the beach, you know, in your backyard and just, okay, I'm going to just start with something I remember. And you can just start, you know, trying to remember some movements and what feels good and what comes up. And then when you go back to taking a class, you'll remember even more. You're like, oh, yeah, that's right. That one is really, I really like. Or while you're taking a class, make some notes on the, on, on the ones that really resonate with you. And then you can then build that into your personal practice when you're out in the woods or out in nature, or just when you didn't want to turn on a device, you know, just have your own practice. They're both, they're both excellent. Yeah. Yeah. I find those, uh, having memorized those movements before sleep and the, the healing sounds before sleep. Uh, I prefer not to turn on a device right before sleep. So that, mm -hmm. that's, that's a great, that's a great a question. Yeah. yeah. It's good to have a five element practice, like to know all five flows and maybe the, the healing sounds and just have a, um, you know, maybe, you know, five warm ups and five flows that you know, mm -hmm. and then you could always do those wherever you are, whenever you need them. Yep. Yep. Good question here from Jane, uh, wondering about the difference between uh, gratitude and appreciation. Mm -hmm. uh, my understanding is that appreciation has a higher vibration 
as if it's more focused on a pure sense of well-being and gratitude is generally focused on moving away from something. I, I mean, I think this is interesting because gratitude and appreciation can be, you know, you're, you're pointing at something and, and saying it from two different ways, basically. You're, you, you know, any emotion is a vibration. Emotion, energy that moves, energy in motion. So it's really a frequency that you're feeling. It's not something that's physical, although when you're feeling an emotion, all of a sudden it will have a physiological effect or let's call it a side effect. I feel an emotion, I feel gratitude. All of a sudden your chemistry starts to change and shift and you're in a more positive state within your nervous system. And so gratitude is just simply placing your attention on something that you're grateful for. And it doesn't need to be a moving away from anything. Uh, it can be really what you're doing is moving towards something. What do I want to move towards? And in moving towards something, you don't have to put a lot of attention on what's behind you. You're holding attention because, again, where your attention goes, your energy is following. Your energy starts to gravitate towards. Think of your attention as a hose, like watering a garden. And where your attention goes, you're going to be putting that water on the flowers and the beautiful garden that you have. And when we start to worry, it's putting your attention in that hose on the weeds. And so you simply put your attention on what you're enjoying, what you like. And if, it's, if the word appreciate makes sense, oh, I really appreciate that particular experience. Boy, am I really grateful for this thing that happened. You can even think about what you're going to be grateful for in the future. So you put your attention to all the things in your future that you're going to be grateful for and you draw that future to you. Because what we're usually doing is putting our attention on what we're worried about and it's watering that garden. We're putting energy into that space. So think, think of gratitude and appreciation is drawing the future you want to you and towards you. They're like, a, they're like magnets to drawing in positive life experience. Okay, so we get some specific questions. Um, Patty Jones asked, my question is, which element, color, and sound would be associated with breast health, uh, fibrosis, and also for prevention? So this is gonna be more the lungs, the lung sound, because the lungs are really close to the breast and the breast tissue. We wanna make sure there's clear circulation of energy through the lung and the lung chi, so breathing exercises, lung healing sounds, the, these like soaring cranes where you're opening the arms and doing that kind of practice can be very, very helpful for the breasts. Um, doctors are telling me I have an autoimmune problem, my vision is blurred, I have headaches, eyes, eyes are swollen, eye pressure, leg weakness, um, They've been doing my sessions for several years. Can you tell me what are the best Qigong movements that may help? Okay, so I would say five elements practice is very good. Any of the five element practices that we do. Um, you could do a variety of different combinations of this. We have five element energy flow, which is a program that it's one routine that we filmed in Yosemite that you just work with. That's excellent. Um, I often will teach five element practices uh, during the subscription class. Um, and we have a five element immersion where you actually just get to do the whole week long training of five elements that includes healing sounds, a variety of different five element flows, meditations. And I might suggest if you can to do that because you'll get a deep dive and there's lots of different ways that we wanna look at creating a big shift in your body's healing and your body's activation of healing energy. So I would suggest those, those three things um, as something to put your attention on. Is there a specific practice for hernia? What are the things to do and things not to do? So avoid you know, lifting things, what, what, they, what often the doctors are telling us not to do with hernia. Lift heavy weight, lift and twist. Uh, you know, it depends on how severe the hernia is. Hernia surgeries are, you know, fairly easy. So if you do go that route, then afterwards, 
You do a lot of Qigong on the belly and the internal organs. You could do that too. I, I suggested to the last person, the five element energy flow that brings a lot of energy to your organs. Um, that would be good. And our workshop Qigong for healthy digestion would be good. Exercises like pebble in the pond where you're bringing energy to your belly. Anything that's going to strengthen the earth elements is good for hernias. Uh, when do we expect the Dalian training to become online and available? We don't know. And, we don't uh, know. Well, that, that is something. And, and even if we did, we wouldn't tell you in case we were wrong. The problem is there's so many moving parts, and we've released a lot of stuff uh, in the last couple of months. And so um, we're we're definitely looking at our timelines for that and when it'll fit into our calendar. But the problem is that uh, things like it was going to be this spring, we were wrong. So I'm glad we didn't say we were going to release it in March because coronavirus changed everything about what we're doing. And so that's why we're kind of, we're a little cagey about release times until we are ready to release because mm -hmm. it's yeah. so easy for things to go sideways. It, it is in our uh, minds and we, we do intend to release it. Absolutely. And, and it, I'll say, I'll put a stake in there and say it will be this year, even though it wasn't this spring like we thought it was going to be. Okay. So, Fantastic. Sure. But I can't say whether it'll be summer. <laughs> yep. Okay. What, my Western doctor advised me to do aerobic. Uh, is there a Qigong aerobic exercise or is Qigong exercise that bring the same benefits as aerobics? Mm -hmm. You could just see my mom and do her aerobics class from the from the 1980s as long as you got a headband and a thong bath. <laughs> Classic. Yeah. yeah, we got to we got to bring out some pictures of my mom. Um, I think we should. Yeah, she's right here. Hey, Karen. <laughs> Looking good. She's ready to do uh, some aerobics, aerobics in the chair. Guys. Let's see if you can get Charlie to do some aerobics. I know he would look good in a in a head in an '80s headband and a thong. He would. Well, Qigong, you can you can you can emphasize more of the fitness part and the cardiovascular strength. That's kind of more our beginning our beginning of the routine exercises like the pump, swimming dragon, um, igniting inner fire. You're going to get a pretty good workout. The tiger. Uh, we have on YouTube a Chi Fit workout that I did, and it's a little bit more fitness. So check that out on the YouTube. It's it's free, so you can just um, you know do that and and try it. But on our subscription, usually most of the classes start with a pretty good workout, and you can get a great cardiovascular workout with the flow. And you know, I'm often saying not everybody has time to you know do a cardio workout. Uh, a stretch class and a meditation. Well, Qigong does all three of those things in one routine. And that's why I like it so much because by doing and combining it, you, you are working with your yin and yang energy, yang being the workout, yin being the meditation, and you're creating that harmony within your system. Me personally, I, I love to do, you know, workouts and mountain biking or stand up paddle boarding. And I feel like Qigong and all the things I do in Qigong allows me to do you know, more active kinds of sports without injury and with listening to my body. So it's not that you don't do aerobics or dance or swimming or whatever activity you love to do. You know, Qigong will just make your body more energized to do those things better and feel better while you're doing it. But you'll get a great cardio workout with your Qigong practice. Well, and, and if what you're into is either somewhat athletic or in some way kind of a in the moment thing, then you'll be able to enter that flow state a lot more easily that, that people are seeking in athletics and then, you know, surfing yeah. or whatever it may be. Um, that's the power of cultivating the practice of entering flow state consciously through Qigong is pretty amazing for that. Uh, hey, I want to steer us towards um, the, the Q&A list is not getting shorter. It's getting longer, even though we're knocking them out. So uh, Zach has a few collected up from Facebook that we'll go oh, good. Let's do that. And then we'll jump on uh, a little bit of live face to face for the remainder of our time. Yeah, we've got a ton of questions coming from Facebook. It looks like the first one we got from Michael. Uh, which green tea styles are the best and which brands are your favorites? There's so many options, it's difficult to decide what to buy. Uh, did you say green tea? Green tea, yes. Uh, make sure they're organic. Um, you know, that's, that's the key. And then 
there's, you know, there's the expensive kind and there's the not so expensive kind. I mean, green tea is, is great and it's usually full of antioxidants as long as it's organic and not, it doesn't have pesticides. So I think that's the key. And then, um, you know, Hidden Peak that we like to promote and we use all their teas. They have some really great organic, loose leaf, more premium kinds of, of green teas. So uh, I, liked, I like that. Uh, I especially like their brands and, um, you know, making it a little more Japanese style and tradition, but you know, there's nothing wrong with getting a, a green tea bag. That's an organic and, you know, just drinking your green tea that way too. Yeah. The other, the other thing I'll say is that there, uh, it, there's a dramatic distinction between Japanese style green teas, which tend to have that, um, fresh lawn clippings taste, the more grassy flavor, which some of us love and other people really don't. And then other folks really prefer the Chinese green tea. So if you've had green tea and you haven't enjoyed it, sometimes it's because you would prefer one or the other and you haven't had that, that category. But also the brewing of it is um, often where people go wrong. It, it's easy, it's very easy for green tea to go bitter. So if you get, uh, there are some green teas that tend to be harder to brew in a way that goes bitter. And there are some green teas that tend to have a sweeter flavor. So one of the most famous is Dragonwell. Um, for that reason, it's uh, fairly easy to brew. It's the kind of tea that if you see uh, Chinese people sometimes will have a glass of tea with just the leaves floating in it and they're straining it with their teeth. That's often Dragonwell because it can just kind of hang out in there all day and uh, not necessarily go bitter. Dragonwell's definitely on my short list of favorites, especially a really high quality one. Um, another one is Clouds and Mist, which is amazing. It smells like almost like chocolate when you smell just the fresh leaves. Um, and it's got a really delightful flavor. And you can kind of see in the broth, the reason it's called Clouds and Mist is because you can sort of see this like moving, all this, uh, these little, I don't know what they are, <laughs> the oils, I guess, yeah. dancing around in your pitcher or in your cup. So those are the two recommendations I'll, I'll throw out there. Is that from Hidden Peak, Ben? They occasionally have those, but you can't uh, find you can them online. Buy them you can just buy them online kind of thing? Yeah, actually, the, my favorite source of um, Dragon Well when it's in season, which is actually now's a good time to be buying it, would be Verdant Tea Company. Verdant Tea Company. Um, they've just got a very strong relationship with a lot of farmers and some amazing clean organic teas. And uh, they can, they're, they're a little high end, but if you're into tea, it's a good place to go. And they often have, you know, when you get there, when the Dragon Ball comes in season, they, they have amazing source. I'll just leave it at that. Cool. That's great. What's next? <laughs> yeah, Zach? definitely. So we have another question from Julia. I have an autoimmune condition celiac mold illness and a low white blood cell count so i'm wondering if the wei chi will help balance and strengthen my immunity or do you have any other advice for me yeah absolutely the breathing uh, is, is great also you know the bone breathing because a lot of the white blood cell production is happening in uh, bone marrow uh, we did that in the iron shirt workshop a very specific bone breathing practice it was the third uh workshop the third session of the iron shirt all iron shirt will be extremely strengthening because as the name suggests, iron shirt means your Wei Qi is very strong and your internal organs are very strong. So I might suggest that. Um, we have that also in our healing meditation series. So if you want to do it more from a, a meditation standpoint, more from a mind training, you can get the audio meditation series, you know, focusing on the bone breathing and the five element meditations can be really helpful for autoimmune just getting the mind activated to start to re-message the way in which your body is in relationship to itself. And that can be extremely helpful as well. Awesome, yeah, thanks for that. We have another question from an anonymous user. I find working on a computer and just being in front of the screen for many hours saps all of my energy. Besides a lot of breaks in Qigong, what other recommendations do you have? Yeah, right, besides this, like, don't do it. <laughs> um yeah that's a tough one because it depends on what your you know what your day is like what your work schedule is like so 
do some Qigong, get real focus, get your energy up, get on the computer, do your work, be more efficient with your time on the computer, and then get off and spend some time off of it. Do that again. Do you know, 10, 15 minutes of Qigong practice, get your energy up, get your mind focused, have in your mind or even on paper, this is something I do, I write, pers I write my notes, and then when I get on the computer, I know exactly what I wanna do, and kind of get in and get out. You know, it's a little bit like going grocery shopping. If you don't have a list, you just wander into, you know, your organic grocery store. And you're just wandering up and down the aisles. Everything looks good. What should I get? You don't know. It takes you two or three times as long to get through the grocery store than if you had a list. So that's what, what I would suggest when you get on the computer. And I think that's a really good strategy because not only are you getting your Qigong practice in, you're more efficient. There's less time on the computer. And then, also think about when you get off the computer, what are you going to do? You know, like, how am I going to replenish? So maybe if you've been on the computer uh, for an hour, uh, you know, might suggest just go outside in nature, put your bare feet on the earth, uh, take a little walk, do some breathing exercises and just cycle through that. Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll throw in a couple of comments on that too, just because my, uh, my history and my background is in tech and building a lot of software and spending enormous amounts of time on the computer. And I think one of the things that um, you'll find is that it scatters chi there. And I think it's because of this uh, just ridiculous amount of cycles of electromagnetic pulses that are taking place inside the chips. And nowadays, this, that superpower is in your palm of your hand with your devices, your phones, your iPads, your tablets, whatever else you may have. And so the, the, it's not just the screen time, it's actually the physical computer itself computing that is creating a sort of a, a ripple effect in your energy system. So by doing the 10 to 15 minutes Qigong practice and then also consciously having times when you're not having screen time. And, and sometimes that can be hard. If you spend a lot of time on the computer, it's tempting to spend a lot of time on your device and it, it's hard to put it down later because you're in that mode and your brain is kind of, is, is used to getting its little uh, dopamine hits from that. So you have to consciously, it's almost like go lock it up in a box somewhere and just not look at it. Um, yeah, it could be challenging. Yeah, definitely. I bet with everybody working from home now, everyone will get a bunch of value from that. But yeah. Leslie has a question regarding Buddha Palm. For the posture of power that comes from Buddha Palm, the gesture for powering up immunity that we did on the April 24th class, do we use the index finger extension up and down because it's the tip of the lung meridian? It's the end of the large intestine meridian. So, um, and a lot of times the lung and large intestine are the paired organs large intestine being the yang of the lung. So the first place chi enters the body is through the lungs. And then it's sort of large intestine has what we want to let go of. It's kind of emotionally a, a, an organ system of letting go. So when you're thinking about cleansing and purifying, you just that, that can be a, an effective way to strengthen your immune system because it is connected to the lungs and it's also about releasing and clearing. Awesome. Yeah. And we have another question from Annette. Do you do elemental Qigong? We do the five elements. Yes. Uh, we have a few different routines on five element practices. Um, we even have one, you know, one that's really nice that we filmed in Yosemite. I love that routine and where we filmed, it was just gorgeous and stunning at the, at the base of El Capitan and mm -hmm. with uh, half dome in the background. That's such a beautiful routine. Um, that's on our website, five element energy flow. Right on. Yeah. And so Aneta actually has three questions. The second one is regarding five elements. There are so many different teachings on the elements. Can we have some samples of your ways of teaching? Uh, yeah. I mean, we, what I like to do with, with the element practice is to create, um, a variety of different relationships. So we have a movement and a flow. We have a standing posture. There's a sound and there's a color. And then there's all the variety of relationships of what that element, um, what that element has a relationship to within your system. So we've been talking about, let's, let's talk about the water element. That's the kidneys. It's associated with the bladder as a paired organ. It's connected to the endocrine system. It's also connected to 
the, the part of the body, the bones, and it is the sensory organ of the ears and hearing. And so when you work on one element, you're working on the relationship, like a ripple effect, like a pebble in the pond. It just, you just create a positive energy through all of those different systems. So yeah, working with the elements is wonderful. Nice. And what are your opinions about wireless devices and everything that's going on in our homes and environments nowadays? And this is also from Aneta. Yeah, you know, it's, it's, it's tough because, you know, it's one of those things that we have to contend with. Uh, it would be nice just to have periods of time where all Wi-Fi and computer stuff is turned off and you get a break from it. That's why I like going out into nature, getting out into the woods. Um, it is another thing that bombards our Wei Qi. So you want to strengthen your Wei Qi, what we talked about earlier, your protective energy, because it's one of those things, kind of a low grade... Um, invasion of your Wei Qi space. So we want to keep our Wei Qi strong so that that doesn't have a adverse effect on our system. Yeah, that makes sense. And we have a question from Anto from Italy. What exercises can I do to cure a vasco-motor rentitis that creates headache and nausea because of the mucus remains that are blocked in my system? Mm. So mucus is in Qigong and in Chinese medicine terms is called phlegm. It's a particular kind of chi that where the chi doesn't, when it doesn't move, it, it starts to consolidate. Um, so what we really want to do is get the chi to move in the respiratory system. Um, it also, when you have a uh, diet is, is it also affects it because when the digestive system can't deal with the phlegm producing foods, it gives it to the respiratory system. So warming foods, low sugar, low dairy. Um, so clean up the diet and then do breathing practices like we just did. I, the one we did at the beginning of our session, you wanna power up your breathing practice because this, it opens up your sinuses. And when you do a breath hold, 10 to 15 seconds, and then come back into sinus breathing or nose breathing, your sinuses start to open. I would do at least three rounds twice a day. Great. Nice. Good and stuff. This is the last one. So we're going to jump in and start doing some uh, in-person stuff with the time that we have left. We have a couple of folks. I'm going to go ahead and uh, Kathy and Tuya Kong, uh, we're going to go ahead and do uh, lower the hands. So if you're still around and you still want to ask your question, sometimes people wander off, then please do go ahead and raise your hand again. And sure enough, there's a couple already happening. Um, and now's the time. Anybody else who wants to go down to the participants link, and then that'll open up the thing on the side that has the list of participants. And at the bottom, there's a raise hand button. If you want to come on and uh, get a little FaceTime with Lee before we break, and now is your chance. I noticed uh, Emmanuel mentioned breath, breath in areas. Lee, I know uh, some of the, uh, the super Taoist weirdos who take this stuff pretty far eventually uh, get really old and don't eat as much. Is that the case? Yeah, I can. They just, they just, um, uh, what did one of my Taoist friends say? I said, hey, how's your day? He's like, I'm uh, sitting in the backyard, watching the tree grow, drinking my saliva. <laughs> so saliva was considered a, an elixir. So when you mix the chi from the environment, like from the sunrise or the sunset, and you mix it into your mouth, it's called the golden elixir. Mm -hmm. And you, you do a specific way of swallowing this particular kind of saliva. And you don't, instead of, you know, the sunlight going into the, plants and then we consume the plants or an animal that then consumes the plants and then we consume the animal you go straight to the source and make that energy available by mixing it into your mouth and the chi of the mouth so this is yeah like the the elixir qigong mantak chia has a book called elixir qigong and that's on this practice if you want to be one of those taoist weirdos and sit yeah. in your backyard and drink saliva you might as well <laughs> i'm still enjoying my tea so yeah, me too. Things to aspire to. Yeah. Okay, first up, we have uh, Tuyet, who I believe we've had um, come and join us for a couple of these in the past. And there you are. I believe you can, we can hear you now, Tuyet, and oh. you're welcome to turn on your camera. Okay, sorry. Okay, I'm turning it on right now. There we are. Hey. Hi, Ben. Hi, everybody. Hey. Um, so my question is, 
um, what are some, um, if you only have 15 or 20 minutes and you're going into a very important meeting, which I will be doing, where you need to have clarity and presence and be guided by um, your inner guidance and not from your head or from fear, I would love to know some simple practices. You know, I, I did some shaking before and that seems to help, but I was thinking to really allow the head to have clarity, the heart to be open, the belly to be grounded. Yeah, you're, you're describing a Qigong all of state, me right? Can be totally there. Great. So, <laughs> yeah, I like what you said with no. shaking. So, you do shaking and then centering. So, you inhale, exhale, and by okay. doing this, your, your mind is clear. You've let go of stress with shaking, and now you're going, I'm going to be clear, I'm going to be focused. I'm going to set my intention on my goal and I'm going to conspire with the universe to get the outcome that I want. Centering. Okay. 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 It's right. a good one before a presentation, public speaking, having to do anything that really, where you really need your mind to be focused, clear and not distracted. Okay. Great. Thank you. Nice one. Yeah, that's a, that is a great one, isn't it? Next up, we have uh, Zach, who I believe is not actually Zach, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so, uh, hi, Imposter Zach, we can hear you. Here we are. Hi. Hi, what's your hey. name really? Oh, it's Karen from Canada, hi. Hi, Karen from Canada, <laughs> nice Thank to see you. you. For Nice to see you guys too. Um, so I was feeling fantastic for weeks and then all of a sudden my lower back got a twinge in it. So I just did a few Qigong and it's actually like 80% better, but I know everything's connected. So would the, um, would the hamstrings be connected to the lower back? So if I stretch, you know, um, there was one session that, of course, they circulate in the sessions, and I can't get it anymore, but I think it was last, I don't know what it was, but we, we did a few, um, some work on the ground where we put our soles together and we pounded our leg with our knuckles. I really like that session. I'm wondering Good. if you'll be doing more with um, legs and lower back. <laughs> yeah, we'll do more legs and lower back for sure. That was even something I was thinking about doing today and getting on the floor, you know, with the legs wide and stretching the hamstrings is great for the lower back. And you could do just two simple exercises. You do the wide leg, you stretch the hamstring, then lie on your back, hug your knees in and just rock. And that's a great thing to do a couple times a day for your lower back just to release it. Because you have, you have that injury, right? So probably you're always ongoing. Yeah, always. Especially with, uh, you know, the kind of sports I like to do and how I like to throw my kids around. <laughs> so, <laughs> okay. I, yeah, I'm, I'm, my back feels great since, you know, as long as I keep, keep up with my practice. So um, uh, you might want to also do the low back workshop. So this is the low back workshop that we did, and I did like a three-hour session specifically on hamstrings, low back, sciatic, core strength, back strength, flows that go to the lower back. So that's a great one for I think I really opening up the energy of the legs. Okay. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thanks. Yeah, the low back stuff is, is uh, it's always a thing, you know, it's such a, it's such a central area. So if and when something does go wrong there, it's so noticeable all the time, no matter what you're doing starts to drive people crazy, but it's, um, in our world now, we just spend so much time sitting and so much time not moving around and uh, as much as we should. And so it's easy for it to get stuck and stagnant there. Uh, next up we have Emmanuel and Emmanuel will be joining us right now. Here we go.
Hi, Manuel. Good to see you again. Hi. I actually I have two questions. How's everybody? Good. Very good. That was his first question. <laughs> oh, no, no, that's not my first question. <laughs> this is a very, this is actually one of the questions I have is something I was meditating on is because my birthday is coming up uh, for Mother's Day. And um, I was wondering where our umbilical cords connect to internally. Oh, that's called the regional chi, because that's where you start in. So, you know, from your original chi, you know, this is also ancestral chi that we're talking about. Um, you know, when we're talking about our ancestors, especially our parents, it's prenatal chi, the gift of life that your parents gave you. And that's a particular kind of chi that is more directly related to source energy. So it's called original chi. Um, and then if you're talking about more specifically from your parents, it's called prenatal chi, the energy you were born with. Where is it connected though, physically, like inside? To your, oh, to your kidneys and your oh, door to your of life. Kidneys. Yeah, from oh. the navel to the door of life and then it's rooted in the kidneys. Navel, door of life, and then kidneys. Oh, okay, cool, awesome. And then um, I'm just looking at my notes uh, here uh, from the last tea with Lee. Um, uh, you mentioned the six yin and the six yang. Um, I think it was about uh, the leg roots, routes. Mm -hmm. um, and then I was wondering how the, uh, the six yin and the six yang affect the, the thrusting channels. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this, the, six, the six primary, there's 12 primary meridians. That's the arms and the legs, six on each. And those are related to organs. And when you're talking about the thrusting channels, they are related more to original chi. So it's, a, it's kind of like different energy that's being circulated through those pathways. So your primary channels are going to be more related to the health and healing of your body. And the thrusting channel is going to be more con your connection to divine source or spiritual energy. So... It's really one energy manifesting in different forms, but the primary channels uh, that we do on acupuncture a lot are more related to physical health. And when we start doing the thrusting channels, part of the eight extraordinary meridians, you have the thrusting channel, the do and the rend, the kind of up the spine, down the front. And these are um, more related to our spirituality, our life's purpose and our consciousness. Very, very great information. Thank you, Lee, for You're answering welcome. questions and having these uh, uh, events during these very wild times. Yeah, absolutely. Well said. Thanks, guys. Hey, Ben, I, I see a question from Maria about um, this, the, the programs that we just released. So maybe we can. Yeah, why don't you uh, give us a brief talk overview? About that a little bit. I think that's great. Yeah, so we just, we just released our latest bundle. One was from the UK. I, I was filming, um, as a lot of you know, I was filming this uh, docu-series called Searching for Superhumans. We were doing some work at the Beckley Foundation, and uh, one of the movies of, of the Harry Potter series was filmed there. It's, it was King Henry VIII's hunting lodge, and we were doing some filming there. And I looked, and they had this beautiful pond on these Roman pillars that were from Roman times. She had them flown in and laid into her this beautiful pond with these big white swans in the background. I was like, oh my gosh, if we have enough time, let's go film a program out there. So we did. That is Qigong for depression. Uh, and then we were in, I was in Croatia teaching last summer, I think it was. Yeah, last summer. And uh, our film crew from Holden Qigong was out there. And I said, hey, let's Let's jump to a couple of the islands here in Croatia and film some programs, mainly for longevity and for seniors. So we did Qigong for healthy hearts. That's a cardiovascular routine. We did Qigong for longevity, better balance. We did a routine, a seated routine. Yeah. And uh, so we just released those. They're great. They're beautifully filmed. We've put a lot of time and energy and work into it. And, uh, you know, Get those into your cycle because they are really fun to do and great 
workouts? Yeah, I think the healthy heart routine is kind of my new favorite right now, but uh, I keep finding that my favorites change. <laughs> well, that routine, Ben, I, I heard about this private island and you could take a boat, a two hour boat trip out there. Mm -hmm. But that beach that we filmed on is always busy. But they gave me a tip that if you, if I hired a boat personally and mm -hmm. went out there when the other boats came in, so we went out there at like 6 p.m. when all the other boats were coming in, that last boat had left. We were coming in and we got there, the sun was setting, and we filmed this routine on this beautiful, white, rocky beach on this private island in Croatia that was just stunningly beautiful. So yeah, it was my favorite routine to film. It's a beautiful spot and the routine itself is great. It's got some things in it that I, you know, I haven't seen you do before for the heart energy and for the, the heart meridians and so forth that I, I absolutely love. It's been a uh, it's been a long time coming. The the edit process on those takes time because they're just such complicated things to film out in nature, and yeah. uh, so we're very very stoked to have those released. And I hope everybody's enjoying them so far. Yeah. Uh, for anybody who's looking for them, they're on our website. You can go to uh, just all products, and the the bundle should show up there of the new 2020 titles. If you click on that, then you can see the individual programs. And if you'd rather just buy one, that's fine too. But we do have a bundle and a special discount this week. Uh, Zach put some information in the, the chat about it. Of course, there's emails and you can scroll through our social pages if uh, you're looking for that coupon code. That is good until I think Friday night at midnight. So uh, great. Let's do, uh, let's do one or two more. We only have a couple more with their hands raised. So let's just do them. And then we'll call okay, it. Okay, let's do it. And I gotta, I gotta go because um, we got Qigong class coming up. Yeah, we got a live class this evening at uh, 5 p.m. For those who are in the subscription, 5 p.m. We're gonna jump on and uh, do a live class, and we'll see you guys then who who are in the subscription. And in the meantime, we'll just do a couple more questions. So okay. Francis Velling is now coming back in, and there we go. How about you? Hi, Francis. We can hear you. Yes. Am I on? Actually, my, yes. my wife. Uh, it's my question. Thanks for taking it. A uh, question I have about, we run into a lot of people who go to India to seek their their peace of mind and their for the health, and they learn some meditation, and they learn about chakras and different colors and how to meditate. And I'm just curious about uh, some... Um, clarity between that and the Chinese way of uh, looking at healing and colors. Uh, there's a lot of difference, subtle differences, but it seems like there's some overlap. Um, just looking for some clarity. Uh, yeah. Help distinguish, clear my mind when I hear things from other people and how to uh, straighten my own mind up with that. Yeah. Think of colors as vibration. So colors are a particular vibration. What are vibration is energy. So anytime you're working with colors, you're working with energy and different colors will represent different things in different cultures. And so when you think of the color red, we often think of more action, more activity, the fire element. When we think of blue, we think of calmness and peace. So they're gonna give a different vibratory quality. It's in fact, if you give somebody a placebo, we're just talking about sleep, a sugar pill that's colored blue versus a sugar pill colored red, the blue one works a lot better. And I thought that was really fascinating. You give somebody a blue pill and it's a placebo, they have much better e efficacy than a red placebo. So colors have influence in our psychology. And also when we put intention and say, I'm gonna put my intention on my heart and visualize green, let's say in the chakra system or in Chinese medicine, I'm gonna visualize red. You're putting your attention there, you have positive, uh, intent with a color with his energy so it doesn't necessarily matter too much when you're working with uh, you know different systems and different colors it's uh, one isn't right one isn't wrong you're just you're working with now understanding the principles of practice sound and color are energy ways to work with energy and there's diff different techniques in the same way when you're trying to get in shape you might swim or you might go for a hike both can be effective, but they're just two different ways to go about accomplishing the same goal. And working with different colors is that way. I mean, you, you might associate green with the, with the liver, is it? Yeah. And they might put green at a different chakra. Correct. But they may 
affect the same when you're focusing on green it may affect both yeah uh, areas yep depends on which mode you're right you're and our, our minds want to understand why and how energy works but uh you know that's the nature of the mind but there's a lot of things we don't understand like let's say you go for a nice walk you know that's good for your heart but you don't have to know everything about your heart to get the benefits of going for a good walk and so some of these practices are like that you just do the practice and your intention is in the right place and you're going to get the benefit because of that so you know we don't understand the principles rather than just uh just working with colors or practice without understanding the principles so your mind is going to a place you have positive intent colors or energy so you have those three things whatever system and it's going to have a positive outcome they're both headed towards the same direction but just a little different Correct. Meaning just different styles. Thank you, sir. Yeah. <laughs> Enjoy your time. Your team. Thank you. <laughs> nice to see you. Great. And last one, we have Lily. And uh, we shall see what Lily wants to ask. Hi, Lily. Hi, Lily. Does Lily have audio? Oh. Strange. Doesn't look like Lily has audio, so that's not going to work. Sorry, Lily. Looks like we're done. Okay. <laughs> as far as Q and A goes. Okay. Well, thanks everybody for joining us and um, another great session. Uh, sounds like we have one next week. So if you want to bring your questions to the one we have coming up, or I'll see people today at five in the subscription, and in, in about an hour and a half. So. Uh, Beautiful practice. Cheers to all of you. Yeah, cheers. Much gratitude for our session and many appreciations. Indeed. Bye all. See you next time. <laughs>